Hello and welcome to week 12 of NFL predictions. My name is Seal and I will be predicting each game who wins and who loses. There are a lot of close games and a lot of upsets last week. I think there's going to be a lot of great games this week. So let's just get into it starting with the 3 and 7 Houston Texans taking on the 4 and 6 Detroit Lions. Texans are coming off of a win over the Patriots 27 to 20 and the Lions are coming off of a shutout loss from the Panthers 20 to nothing. Both offenses have been pretty similar this year, with both of them averaging 22.7 points a game. Texans are averaging, averaging just a few more yards per game, though. But their defense, I think, has been a little bit worse this year, with them averaging 425 yards a game and 27 points allowed per game. To the Lions, 28 points allowed per game and 409 yards per game. Uh, Deshaun Watson, though, has had a great season so far with 20 touchdowns, 5 interceptions, almost 2,900 yards. While I don't think the Lions are going to have another shutout uh, on offense this week, I don't think they're going to be able to pull out a win here. I'm going to say Texans win 28 to 24 over the Lions. And now we have three and seven Washington taking on the three and seven Dallas Cowboys. Washington's coming off of a win over the Bengals, 20 to nine, and the Cowboys are coming off of a big win over the Vikings, 31 to 28, breaking a four-game losing streak. Washington's offense hasn't been great this year, only averaging 20 points uh, and 345 yards a game. Cowboys offense has been a bit better, though, averaging 23 points and 415 yards a game. But their defense has struggled a lot more than Washington's this year, uh, allowing 31 points and almost 400 yards per game. Washington's defense, however, are only averaging 22 points and 338 yards allowed per game. And the last time these two teams played was not too long ago, just a few weeks ago, where Washington won in one big 25-3 to over the Cowboys. I don't think it's going to happen this time. I'm going to say the Cowboys win. I think it's going to be a really close game, but I'm going to go with the Cowboys 22-21 to over Washington. And now we have the 6-4 and Baltimore Ravens facing the 10-0 and Pittsburgh Steelers. Ravens are coming off of an overtime loss from the Titans, 24-30. to and the Steelers are coming off of a win over the Jaguars, 27-3. Two of the top three defenses in the league. The Steelers' defense has been just a little bit better this year, averaging 17 points and 332 yards allowed per game. To the Ravens, 19.5 points, 353 yards uh, on average allowed per game. Both offenses have also been excellent this year. Ravens averaging 26 points and 357 yards per game. To the Steelers, 29 points, almost 30 points per game, and 356 yards on average per game as well. And Ben Roethlisberger's also had a great season this year. 24 touchdowns, 5 interceptions, 2,500 yards passing. Lamar Jackson's also having a good season. 15 touchdowns, 6 interceptions, almost 2,000 yards passing. But he also leads their, their, leads their team in rushing with 575 yards, 3 touchdowns. And they did play a few weeks ago with the Steelers winning 28-24. to I do think the Steelers continue their streak. I think they go 11-0, just barely squeaking by the Ravens, 35-31. to I do think the Ravens put up 30 points against the Steelers for the first time this year. The Steelers haven't had a, a team score over 30 points on them this year. I think the Ravens do that. I think it's going to be a close game, but, but I'm going to go with the Steelers. And now we have the 6-4 and four Arizona Cardinals facing the 4-6 and six New England Patriots. The Cardinals are coming off of a tough loss from the Seahawks, 28-21. to And the Patriots are also coming off of a loss from the Texans, 27-20. to The Cardinals' offense has been great this season, averaging 28 points, almost 29 points, and 422 yards per game. And Kyler Murray, Kyler Murray leading that offense with 18 touchdowns, or 19 touchdowns, 8 interceptions, 2,600 yards passing. Their defense has also been pretty good, at only allowing 23 points, 386 yards per game. The Patriots' defense is also only allowing 23 points, 366 yards per game. I think their defense has been a little bit better this year, but their offense has struggled quite a bit, only only averaging 20 points and 375 yards per game. I think I'm going to go with the Cardinals on this one, 27-21. to 21. I think it's going to be a one-score game. I think the Patriots could take it, but I'm going to go with the Cardinals in this one. And now we have the 6-4 and four Las Vegas Raiders taking on the 3-7 and seven Atlanta Falcons. The Raiders are coming off of a close loss from the Chiefs, 35-31, to 31, almost giving the Chiefs their second loss of the season, which the first one was from the Raiders. And the Falcons are coming off of a big loss from the Saints, 24-9. to nine. The Raiders' offense has stepped it up a lot the past couple weeks, averaging 28 points and 377 yards per game. 
Falcons offense has also been pretty good this season, averaging 25 points, almost 400 yards uh, a game, only putting up nine points against the Saints, which is a good defense. Matt Ryan threw two interceptions in that game. Derek Carr is having a phenomenal season, though. 19 touchdowns, three interceptions, 2,400 yards passing. Matt Ryan, even though he did throw two interceptions, only has seven on the year with 15 touchdowns, almost 3,000 yards passing on 255 attempts. Or, I mean, 255 completions, 388 attempts uh, a game. I'm going to go with the Raiders on this one just because I think their defense has been a lot more solid this year and reliable. Uh, the Falcons' offense has also been on and off of the past couple weeks. I'm going to go with the Raiders, 31-27. to I do think it's going to be a close game. I think the Falcons could take this one, but I'm going to go with the Raiders in the, in, over the Falcons, 31-27. to And now we have the 3-7 and Los Angeles Chargers taking on the 7-3 and Buffalo Bills. Chargers are coming off of a win over the Jets, 34-28. to And the Bills are coming off of a bye week, and the week before they lost in a close game to the Cardinals, 32-30. to the Chargers offense has been really efficient this year, averaging 26 points, 412 yards a game. The Bills offense has also been really good this year, averaging 27 points, 388 yards per game. Both defenses being around the same with the Chargers averaging 27 to the Bills 26 points allowed per game. Chargers only allowing 353 yards to the Bills 387 yards a game. And Josh Allen's having a phenomenal season, 21 touchdowns, 7 interceptions, 28, almost 2,900 yards passing. Herbert's also having a great season, 2,700 yards passing, 22 touchdowns, 6 interceptions. I'm going to go with the Bills in this one just because of the Chargers, Chargers defense. Uh, I don't trust it enough. I'm going to go 30-26 to 26 over the Chargers. And now we have the 3-7 and seven New York Giants taking on the 2-7-1 and one Cincinnati Bengals. The Giants are coming off of a bye week, and the Bengals are coming off of a loss from the from Washington, 20-9. to nine. The Giants offense has struggled a lot this year, averaging 19 points, 324 yards a game. Their defense has been a little bit better, though, averaging 23 points, 377 yards allowed per game. And QB Daniel Jones with 8 touchdowns, 9 interceptions, 2,100 yards passing. And Cincinnati's offense with 21 uh, points per game, 375 yards uh, per game as well. But now with Joe Burrow out, I don't I don't see that offense being able to do much, uh, especially against the Giants defense, which has been pretty good at some points. I'm going to go with the Giants 20 to 17 over the Bengals. And now and now we have the seven and three Tennessee Titans taking on the seven and three Indianapolis Colts. The Titans are coming off of a big overtime win over the Ravens, 30 to 24. And the Colts are also also coming off of a big overtime win over the Packers, 34 to 31. Both offenses have been pretty similar this year, both of them averaging 27 points and around the same amount of yards per game. The Titans' defense has struggled a little bit more than the Colts, though, allowing 26 points and four, almost 400 yards per game. The Colts' defense, however, has been really good, averaging 20 points and 313 yards allowed per game. And for the Titans, Ryan Tannehill's been having a great season. 22 touchdowns, 4 interceptions, almost 2,400 yards passing. And Derrick Henry's having a great season for them, rushing the ball with over 1,000 yards, 9 touchdowns on the year. So he's also been a big part of that Titans offense. Philip Rivers also having a good season with 14 touchdowns, 8 interceptions, almost 2,700 yards passing. They did play just a couple weeks ago with the Colts winning pretty big at 34-17. to I'm going to go with the Colts again in this one uh, over the Titans, 27-24. to Just because the Colts have one of the best run, rush defenses in the league. And I think because of the Titans' rush game being a big part of their offense, I think the Colts are going to be able to shut it down. I'm going to say 27-24 for the Colts. And now we have the 4-7 and seven Carolina Panthers taking on the 4-6 and six Minnesota Vikings. The Panthers are coming off of a big win over the Lions, 20 to nothing, breaking a five-game losing streak. And the Vikings are coming off of a close loss from the Cowboys, 31 to 28. The pa the Vikings' offense has been pretty good this year, averaging 26 points, almost 400 yards per game. Their defense, however, has struggled, averaging 28 points and almost 400 yards allowed per game. The Panthers' offense has also struggled a bit this year, averaging 23 points, 365 yards a game. And now with Teddy Bridgewater out and P.J. Walker as the new QB, who did throw two interceptions in their win against the Lions. And now they're going up against a better defense in the Vikings. I think they're, they're going to have to rely more on their run game. And with Christian McCaffrey still out, 
I think they're going to struggle on offense. I'm going to go with the Vikings 28 to 21 over the Panthers. And now we have the six and four Miami Dolphins facing the zero and 10 New York Jets. The Dolphins are coming off of a loss from the Broncos 20 to 13, breaking a five game win streak. The Jets are coming off of a loss from the Chargers 34 to 28. The Jets offense have, has obviously struggled a lot this season, averaging 15 points, only 289 yards per game. The Dolphins offense, however, has been pretty good this year, only uh, averaging 26 points, only 319 yards a game, though. And QB2 attack of Iloa did get hurt in their last game against the Broncos. Ryan Fitzpatrick, not a bad replacement, though. And their defense has also been pretty solid, averaging 20 points allowed per game, 490, 499, or 4, 399 yards almost 400 yards per game on average allowed as well. So I'm going to go with the Dolphins 30 to 24 over the New York Jets. And now we have the 7 and 3 Cleveland Browns facing the 1 and 9 Jacksonville Jaguars. The Browns are coming off of a win over the Eagles 22 to 17 and the Jaguars are coming off of a big loss from the Steelers 27 to 3. The Jaguars defense has struggled a lot this season averaging 30 points and over 415 yards allowed per game their offense hasn't been any better to averaging 20 points and 345 yards a game and QB Lutton throwing four interceptions in their last game against the Steelers uh, and some of one of them re resulting in a pick six and their defense has given up 24 points in nine consecutive games the Browns defense hasn't been a lot better this season but it's definitely been better averaging 26 points and 371 yards allowed per game their offense has also been better, averaging 23 points, 353 yards a game. Baker Mayfield having a good season this year, 15 touchdowns, 7 interceptions, almost 1,900 yards passing. I'm going to go with the Browns, 27-21 to over the Jaguars. And now we have the 8-2 New Orleans Saints taking on the 4-6 Denver Broncos. The Saints are coming off of a big win over the Falcons, 24-9, to which extends their win streak to 7 games. The Broncos are also coming up coming off of a win over the Dolphins 20 to 13. The Saints offense has been phenomenal this year averaging 30 points and 384 yards per game. Uh, even without Drew Brees, QB Taysom Hill did lead their team like I said to a win over the Falcons. Didn't pass for any touchdowns but did rush two in that game. The Broncos offense however has struggled a lot 20 points 364 yards a game and their defense hasn't done any better uh, allowing 26 points. 364 yards a game. However, the Saints' defense has, has been elite this year, averaging 22 points, 323 yards allowed per game. I'm going to go with the Saints 31-20. to 20. I think it's going to be a two-score win for the Saints in that one. And now we have the 4-6 and six San Francisco 49ers taking on the 7-3 and three Los Angeles Rams. The 49ers are coming off of a bye week, and the Rams are coming off, coming off of a big win over the Buccaneers, 27-24. to 24. The Rams' defense has been elite this year, only allowing 19 points, 311 yards per game. Their offense has also been solid, only uh, averaging 24 points, over 406 yards per game. The 49ers' defense has also been good, only allowing 23 points, 326 uh, uh, yards allowed per game as well. Their offense has also been pretty solid, only uh, averaging 23 points, 383 yards. But QB Jared Goff for the Rams with 16 touchdowns, 8 interceptions, almost 2,900 yards passing. I'm going to go with the Rams on this one. I'm going to take their defense over the 49ers. Uh, I say they win 24-21 to over the 49ers. And now we have a big game with the 9-1 Kansas City Chiefs facing the 7-4 Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Chiefs are coming off of a big win over the Raiders, 35-31. to And the Buccaneers are coming off of a close loss from the Rams, 27-24. to both offenses have been phenomenal this year with the Chiefs averaging 32 points to the Buccaneers 29 points per game. The Chiefs averaging way more yards per game though with 421 to the Buccaneers 366 uh, per game. And I think their defense has been a little bit better this year, only allowing 21 points uh, to the Buccaneers 23 points per game. I do think this one could be could turn out to be a shootout. I'm going to say the Chiefs win 30 to 28 in a really close win in a really close game, but I'm going to say the Chiefs win over the Buccaneers. And now we have the 5 and 5 Chicago Bears facing the 7 and 3 Green Bay Packers. 
The Bears are coming off of a bye week, and the Packers are coming off of a tough 31-34 overtime loss to the Colts. The Bears' deep offense has struggled a lot in comparison to the Packers with 30 points uh, on average and 444 yards per game for the Packers to the Bears' 19 points and 321 yards on offense per game. The Bears' defense has been a little bit better than the Packers, though, with 20, 21 points to the uh, Packers, 25 points allowed per game. And QB Aaron Rodgers with 29 touchdowns, only four interceptions, almost 2,900 yards passing. Uh, even though the Bears have a slightly better defense, I'm going with the Packers' offense, 25-19. to 19. I don't think it's going to be a very high-scoring game, but I'm going to go with the Packers over the Bears. And finally, on Monday Night Football, we have the 7-3 Seattle Seahawks facing the 3-6-1 Philadelphia Eagles. The Seahawks are coming off of a big win over the Cardinals, 28-21. And the Eagles are coming off of a loss from the Browns, 22-17. The Seahawks offense has been phenomenal this year, averaging 32 points, 420 yards per game. Their defense, however, has been the complete opposite, allowing 446 yards and 29 points per game. And the, the Eagles defense has been a little bit better, averaging 25 points, 366 yards per game. And QB Russell Wilson with 30 touchdowns, 10 interceptions, almost 3,000 yards passing on the season. Even though the Seahawks defense has struggled a lot, I don't think this Eagles offense is going to be able to do it. I'm going to go with the Seahawks offense on this one, 30-24 to 24 over the Eagles. Thank you for watching, and feel free to post your predictions in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. But thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.